time. It is a Saturday doing a extra one today just because it's such a nice day around the state. We're watching, I believe that's Jackie, and I can tell. How do I know? I don't, but I think I know because her head's flatter than um, shadows. Uh, we're still the big mystery is where's the third baby? You know, that happened yesterday over the big storm, right? The winds are blowing 7,500 miles an hour up there. And one of the babies hasn't been seen. There's three eaglets. One, it might be up against what some are guessing is it's thinking it's up against here, but we're not seeing it during feeding time. So it's it's doesn't mean it's not okay, but it it's, makes you wonder if it's okay. So I know it, it's funny because I'm so glued to this, you know, nature snack in the mornings and the afternoons and during the storm and kind of living it with her that when that third eaglet didn't show up to eat the other day yesterday i was like oh dang i mean this is it's painful right i mean nature is it's a tough thing okay let's see what we got now she's moving okay okay just cue the movement of course you see the babies there she looks like she's getting ready to go somewhere usually that means shadows oh look at all the fish yeah shadow has been hard working a couple good sized fish they don't seem like they're hurting for food they always uh they always seem to come through with the food i feel like shadow is an awesome hunter so there she goes that's the branch she sits on and shadow sits on that branch too um so there's one eaglet and there she goes now this i would guess i'm not an ornithologist but i would guess that um shadow is very close by they won't leave the nest unattended for very long um and then these are blackbird carcasses the blackbirds they they i'm surprised how many of those they eat they kind of go after them um so i know it's kind of i'm like waiting for the second chick to show up i think it's right here uh but the cup they're getting they're getting large and again this berm is high this berm is probably three inches high so if there there could easily be a baby back in here right now we're seem to be missing one i know it's devastating it's like um oh I wonder if she can eat on her own yet. Wouldn't that be interesting? Okay, I see I set a little movement here, right? See that? I think that's the other one, moving independently. Oh, right? Yeah, that's the head. Um, I thought I heard a chirp a little bit too. You probably can't hear the chirp. Okay, so oh, enough of that. It's emotional. Temperature right now at the birds in um, Big Bear, it's 37 degrees. That's at lunchtime. At the top of the tree, it's 140 feet. I think it's a spruce tree. Winds are light, so they're getting a break after a couple of days, just getting hammered down there. Um, and the state got some good rain as well, too. Uh, beneficial rain, beneficial snow, uh, to the point that we weren't, um, you know, we didn't see we didn't see a lot of issues. We didn't see a lot of burn zone issues in the Palisades. We didn't see a lot of snow issues on the highways, although there were, but just not, it wasn't out of control. So here's the jet stream. It's kind of arcing up and over the state. Here's Cal or Bay Area. Here's Southern California. Here's Cape Mendocino. And uh, this ridge, that's a ridging thing. That ridge is going to hang on for a little while. Stop it down. This is that was a um, infrared satellite just showing you where the heat signatures um, and what we've done is the coldest temperatures are in um, reflected are color coded in white. That's what you're seeing is cloud tops. Essentially, this is actually a visible satellite, which tells you that okay, yeah, we're looking at just it's like a snapshot from the goes west. Uh, what do we see? I see a little bit. It looks like wispy kind of radiation fog trying to form here the way it's set up. You see the clouds up in Northern California. We've got uh, Sierra Nevada's got showers, or not showers, but clouds, maybe a few scattered showers, but clear along the coast from Bay Area South, right? Pretty clear along the coast. We can take a live camera shot. Um, let's go to, this is Horse Hill, which we called yesterday. This is up in Neyland. And they got some snow up there, but you can see it's warmed up a little bit and it's rained. Uh, a, a tad and that is probably what has cleared out the the snow um and you can see here you know you know yeah yeah northern california folks uh, just east of eureka um neeland and then this is mount tamalpais and let's take three hours on this this is looking back towards san francisco we you know this shot if you watch this channel at all and i think the clouds pop up a little bit pop out a little bit here coming up and you'll get a glimpse of Ocean Beach, I think, right? Come on, come on. There's a little bit of clearing trying to occur. 
No, not happening. Okay, so that's Mount Tam. This is down towards San Francisco. This is in San Francisco. This is, um, this would be the Golden Gate Bridge here. Uh, Golden Gate Park here, right? And then this is the avenues, or this is the Richmond District, and then these are the avenues here. So a lot of people live out here. That's the kind of day it is. Not just um, in Northern California, but down to about Central, Southern, Central California, you've got um, some cloud cover. It's gonna be a nice day. And then tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, clouds increase and then showers develop tomorrow night in the North Bay at a Sunday night into Monday. So we got a Sunday night into Monday event um, and then a couple other things next week. So this is the big picture. Here are some wind advisories. Those go in effect for tomorrow as that system comes in. A winter storm warning will, go, will pop up for tomorrow night, Sunday night, like I said. And then you can see you can see where the storm's coming. You can also see where the trough is, right? Kind of. Okay, and then this is interesting. These are wind advisories, right? And then here, these are fire warnings, fire warnings. So you have, they're having big winds, which is interesting, right? So red flag warnings through the plains, through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and southern Texas. Here are um, tornado watches. So severe weather. When you see these, when you see these these yellows and these reds, these are flood watches and severe thunderstorm warnings. Those areas, that's that's going to really disrupt flights, especially in the afternoon. Right now, Atlanta Hartfield looks okay. Um, most of this seems to be out of the big airport hubs, but still. And then up here in Minnesota, you've got uh, those are what are those? Those are winter. Those are blizzard. Is those blizzard warnings? I should know. I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll down. I think the orange is blizzard warning. Let's see. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning. What is that blizzard warning? Where's the orange? Tornado warning? No. Huh? Yeah, those are tornado warnings down here. Yeah, there's just some nasty weather going on. Um, I think these are blizzard, the orange ones. Okay, so we move on. This is the national map, and we did this a little bit yesterday, um, where we go. Oh, here's the jet stream. Here's the trough, right? Because yesterday we had the trough more out west was doing this, right? And then today, the ridge is here. See it coming up and then driving down and then digging under. And that's where the inclement is, weather is. That's where all the watches and warnings are. So we talked yesterday too about um, temperatures and you can see the, the dividing line. There's 56 degrees in Lubbock. So look at the dividing line here. You can almost see the cold front. See the temperatures below that line? Uh, that's south of the jet stream, below the jet stream, essentially, even though the jet stream's arcing up. Um, you're seeing 70s, 80s, and the whole bit. And north of that, up in Denver, Kansas City, you're in the 40s, low 50s. So 20 degrees spread across that line. I know there's some miles involved, but that just gives you an indication of what we talked about yesterday with the jet stream. Um, okay, so the GFS, here we go. Kind of just getting right to business today, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. Sun's coming out a little bit. I got to get my act together and get, get moving here. So, um, well, not from you guys, but I'm like, I got, I, dude, I'm doing a remodel and I'm doing, redoing the swimming pool, which, dude, if you're, if, you, I'm, I'm, if you're lucky enough to have a swimming pool, I've my whole life I've wanted a swimming pool, so I finally got a swimming pool. But God dang, do they require, like when you redo one, holy smokes, you could have built a house. I could build a house in other parts of the country for what it's costing me to redo this pool. I should show you some pictures. Hmm. Okay, this is the GFS, and then we're watching for there's today, and then here comes tomorrow night. So this is Sunday afternoon, and boom, tomorrow night into Monday morning, and then gone. That's Monday afternoon, okay? And then the next thing looks like a little tweak to the north on Thursday morning, and then another little tweak on Friday afternoon, Saturday morning. So you get the idea. So nothing really, nothing really staring us down. These are the accumulated rainfall. This is through the weekend. So that's where the rain's gonna fall. So through the next 36 hours, that's where the rain will be, which makes sense based on what we've seen in far Northern California. And then it fills up a little bit as we get into Monday, Sierra Nevada gets some action, but the whole of the next couple of weeks, that's the rain, oops, I didn't want that to happen, dang. That's the, the, the basically the footprint of the rainfall 
over the next 14 days, if that goes down. And the seven inches of rain up in Northern California, and you, that's, that's classic. That looks like March to me, as a matter of fact. And you still see a little bit of rain further south, but not much. And again, will that all happen? Man, in some iteration of that will happen for sure. This is uh, Palisades Tahoe, and it's busy today. I pulled up a um, little bit of wind up there as well. I pulled up the camera this morning and the lines going in and out and oh my god the parking lot's full because it's reserve reservations on the weekend and people are frothy and there's nothing worse than having a sick run and then pulling up into a pulling up into a, a line like this because that line it's moving pretty good but i guarantee you some of the lines are bigger and there's nothing it's because you're all frothy you just want to keep skiing and you're like oh my god i gotta stand in line so cameras the one time i want it to move it's not gonna move, but that's fine because we can easily go on to North Star. This is this morning as well, and then there's a line. And I've noticed this about North Star. I think the um, outfits at North Star are very, very nice. It's a very, and I, you can see what colors are in this year, like this yellow or orange. I think that's in, right? Right? There's a muted colors. It's, skiing is the most, I mean, I've been skiing since the 60s. It is such a fashion, and surfing's like this too, but skiing more so because you need clothes. But it is such a fashion-driven sport. And it's funny because when I used to ski a lot, every year you'd go up. I was from Paradise, and we were like, duh. You know, we didn't have any clue. And there was no internet, so you didn't know what colors or what people wore, what looked cool. And uh, we would, uh, I would watch, and I'd go, oh, camo's in this year or whatever. And you would see it. And then over the next couple, by the time I get ready to purchase me a you know, one of these color jackets right here, these guys, whatever that color is, tangerine. When I finally get one, it's going to be effed out. Like, it's done. Like, I've got it. And it's like, what do you do? Everybody will be wearing camo. So, I know. That's just a, that's an old man move. Um, it's Ocean Beach. The camera's just not liking me. It's big at the beach today. Let me see if I can play it up for you. Um, it's pretty good size. It's, the ocean, Mavericks is breaking today. We'll look at that as well. The swells are big. It's going to stay big the next couple of days along the coast. So it's just dangerous ocean. It's winter. Um, not much I can tell you other than get used to it. For the, for the next week and a half, the ocean looks like this. It, it, it moves up and down. Like tomorrow, it's going to come down a little. Next day, it's going to come up. They're calling Ocean Beach a solid 8 to 10. This is Steamer Lane. This was taken about noontime or just before lunchtime. And, you know, if your tide's a little little high. You can tell that by the, the rocks and where guys are surfing or people are surfing. But fun. The steamer lane not showing is big. Probably call, I'd call that four to six. And then this is Mavericks. And you'll see people in the water here. So you got, uh, oh, come on, play. Yeah, there's people in the water there. Let's see if I can make it play. Kim and Kim. And I know, I'm sorry to drag you through this. I did this yesterday too. I want to see that water move. Oh, it's not going to move for us. Maybe if I do this. Thanks for bearing with me. Okay, I can make that move. You see the three bodies sitting out there? There it goes. So you got three guys. One, two, three, or maybe, yeah, three people. But that's a tough day. It's a rough day to be surfing at Mavericks. Okay, I'm just moving along, man. And I got to figure out these cameras because I had them dialed for a while where they would play as soon as I click in, but they're not. Um, this is Doheny. Learn something interesting about Doheny. Um, okay, it's going to stop. Um, let's look at the birds. Um, Doheny, if you are, are Dana Point, you know the story about Dana Point, Richard Henry Dana, um, two years before the mass, but Doheny was a homesteader, as you look at Jackie on the nest, Doheny was a homesteader, and this is down just south of Laguna Beach, and he built a homemade drill out of eucalyptus, because they loved eucalyptus trees back then, this is back in the late 1800s, and drilled and found oil. Became one of the richest men in Southern California. I think one of the richest guys in the country at one point, Doheny. And I didn't know that. I just, I always wonder, who's this Doheny guy? But he found oil. I think he was the first, oh, I shouldn't say this, but I think he was the first guy in LA to figure out the oil thing, or at least to capitalize on it from that standpoint. Okay, so really, fingers crossed, praying for the third little chick. We did see two this morning. Um, so you, you never know. You just never know. But she's back. She did leave the nest for a while. We saw that earlier. Have a great day. I'll see you back here maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow's kind of a mellow day, so maybe I'll break, give you guys a break. Um, but we are definitely looking for what? We're looking for rain tomorrow night in Northern California, spreading south through Big Sur 
on um, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, and then break, and then the next system after that is midweek. None of, none of their stuff looks high grade. Okay, I'll see you back here maybe tomorrow.